So let's get started with history. So there used to be something called symbolic AI, right? What used to be called symbolic AI, the goal of those AI systems, this is more than 20 years ago, was to build general artificial intelligence. Okay? Achieving this general intelligence is really tall goal, which means one system that could solve any problem. And there were some limited successes. I shouldn't even call limited because they were quite extraordinary for those days. So there were lots of applications, planning, for example, like path planning for robots. How do you go from A to B um, in the most efficient way or the most optimal way, right? And under uncertainty, there might, some, uh, there might be some obstacles on the way or under some environment constraints, um, environment that could only be partially observable. So you cannot see the entire environment and model them accurately, but you have only partial information. And with that, you have to make some decisions, some algorithms to go from one point to the other. And another big application is symbolic reasoning. Um, some of the techniques that are used even today to reason about the correctness of critical software and hardware were developed as during the era of symbolic AI. So they are just like, uh, if you have a C program that is going to fly a plane, then you may want to extract that C program statements as mathematical equations and the reason about the correctness of the program using mathematical logic. We'll keep coming back to this. So there are many tools. They are called formal tools. Formal verification is the name of the technique. So they use these reasoning techniques and most of those techniques were developed during this era of symbolic AI. And there are also heuristics and knowledge representation techniques, which are uh, used in almost every field today. And these work best with static, well-defined problems. What do you mean by well-defined? Well-defined means those problems that could be encoded as rules and those rules that could be reasoned about using logical reasoning or mathematical logic. Suppose we were to build a, a natural language processing system, right? for English language, then you will encode rules like, oh, it should have subject, verb, and object, and subject should come first, and then verb, and then object, and so on. And then when the AI system generates a new statement in English language, whatever statement it generates, you will be able to reason about it. Rather, the system will be able to reason about it saying, okay, I arrived at this statement because the statement follows these rules. And in my statement, this is the subject, this is the verb, this is the object, and it follows all these rules. And I applied these rules in this sequence to arrive at this, all right? So the main things to notice in this slide, are uh, the goal was general artificial intelligence, the ones within quotes, and they were arrived at using logical reasoning, right? Using some underlying mathematical logic. So what about today, for the last 10 years, uh, we hear about this neural networks. By neural networks in this slide, I mean all machine learning, deep learning, all these things, the present day neural network. So here the goal is to solve a very specific problem effectively and efficiently. In contrast to the previous symbolic AI, which was to build general artificial intelligence, the goal of present day neural network is to solve a specific problem effectively and efficiently all right you have this image recognition and you have this nlp you have this reinforcement learning so why do i say it is specific because if you have a network that is great for image classification you can't really expect it to expect it to guarantee the same accuracy when you use the network for nlp for example right so it is specific to the problem at hand so the network that you train and develop for image recognition works best only on images. You cannot really transfer it to NLP. Again, the same way, the other way around, right? If you build a network for NLP, you cannot really use it for anything else. You have to use it for NLP. You can expect it to work fine as long as the data that you show the system is reasonably close to the data that it has seen before. So how does this work, right? It works on specific domains like image or NLP, and it looks at lots of data. You feed it like millions of training examples. The example that we just saw, if you want to write an algorithm to generate English statements, then rather than encoding the rules of English language, what you do is you show it millions of English statements and then say, okay, try to identify some pattern and just 
gave me a statement that will uh, closely match any of these patterns or derivations of one or more patterns, right? So in this case, it is just pattern matching. It is identifying patterns in millions of uh, statements and trying to build something that will be close to any of the other patterns that it already saw, correct? So in this case, it cannot really reason about once it generates a statement, it will be perfectly valid statement, and but it won't be able to reason using some rules saying, oh, I generated this particular statement because of this, this, this rule. You can only say, oh, I generated this statement with this accuracy, looking at million other statements, correct? So again, in this slide, the main things to notice, uh, the goal is to solve a specific problem rather than a generic problem like symbolic AI. And it's done using pattern matching rather than logical reasoning, right? We will come back to this. So what is in store for the future? So we will put off this slide until the next 40 minutes because until then we will see what are the trends, what are the challenges of today's AI and what we can learn from the past and how we can infuse some of those into present day AI, right? You will also see some opportunities, we will also see some trends and many unsolved problems. 